Hi, I'm Claire, um, and we're here today at Solent University testing our subsea WIT energy harvesting device. Our WIT energy harvesting device um, uses motion from the environment. In this case, it's taking subsea currents. The subsea currents um, move the device back and forth using vortex-induced vibration, transferring that through the housing that it's enclosed in. Um, and when the pendulums move, they swing, which turns a shaft um, in one direction. From this, we can harvest energy, um, and from that energy, we convert it into electricity. Because the WIT energy converter is a very clever piece of hardware where it moves around all six degrees of freedom and, and drives one single output shaft, what we're keen to find out here in the tank is actually when we put a load onto that, what's the effect on the motion from the hydrodynamics of the pipe work in the water. We're going to stick it in the tow tank behind me, um, run it up and down at various speeds um, and see um, if we can get any vortex-induced vibration. When you've got a fluid, whether it's air or water, moving past something, it tends to generate lift. Um, what we're seeing in this particular application is something called uh, von Karman vortex shedding. And that's what happens when it, basically off each side of the cylinder you get to what's called the VIV lock-in frequency, which is what we're targeting for our WIT energy device. Um, and then you get these opposing vortices that form either side of the cylinder. And that gives you a cyclic motion. And that's what we're using to drive the WIT energy converter. We're trying to aim for that natural frequency where the thing is moving its most, it's the most active. Um, so obviously motion is where we get power. The WIT device will enable you to charge um, a battery um, in, in remote locations where there's no current power source. It would trigger charge a battery and would continuously provide power for as long as you needed it to. It can be short-term deployments of equipment or for long-term deployments of equipment where it would be costly to replace the battery. So with this you can just keep the batteries topped up without having to mobilise an expensive vessel and go down with an ROV just to change the batteries. The actual concept we've inverted, so what you will see um, in the testing um, files is slightly different to what will be in the real life application. Um, in the real life application we'll have the wick tethered to the seabed, um, the pipe will go up, you'll have a float on top and as the current flows over the pipe you'll get the VIV effect. We're looking at three different diameters of pipe, um, so essentially we've got the wick suspended near the floor of the tank, you have a length of pipe above that. Um, which is sort of two metres long, give or take, and, um, and what we're doing is three different diameters ranging from 75 millimetres up to 110 millimetres. We chose um, Solent University's tow tank because its um, ability to go at various speeds, so we can go from 0.1 metres per second right up to 4 metres per second, um, so it's well within our range of testing vortex-induced vibration. The tank behind me is 60 metres long, it's uh, 1.8 metres deep and about 3 metres wide, and we had to scale everything, so it's a scale model, um, we're actually using a real size um, width device, but the pipe and the speeds that we're going at have been calculated before we um, started the testing. So it's accurate um, representation of what we might see subsea. It's going well. So uh, we've tested the, the width um, with a series of different diameters and we're seeing displacements up to around 100 millimetres from the central position and frequencies of around 1.5 to 2 hertz, which is uh, the operating sweet spot for the WIT energy converter. So it works and we see movement and we can generate power um, at these sort of lower speeds. I'm really pleased with how the testing's gone over the past five days. We've seen uh, movement from the WIT at a much broader range of speeds, which is fantastic for looking at future customer applications. So that gives us basically a wider application of real life applications of the WIT energy converter with a, a subsea current sort of driving mechanism. It's not just a, a short tube with a WIT energy converter. These sorts of things can operate in quite a large string so um, we can actually capture some energy from some quite slow moving currents. We've proven that the WIT technology works. It's in the water, generating power and it's a fantastic result for the project.